Signal Gasoline. Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, death laughs last. I am the Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Clint Garvey had never been the same after the death of Eddie Lamar. Eddie was his closest friend. They'd gone to school together, come up from the streets into the big time, side by side. Their partnership had been a profitable one. Eddie had plenty of money. There were no domestic troubles. His health was good. And Clint had always seemed puzzled as to why a man like Eddie would commit suicide. It just wasn't in the cards. Still, no matter how much pressure Clint put on the police department, their answer was always the same. Did you forget it, Garvey? It was suicide. The coroner says so, the police surgeon says so, and I say so. You could still be wrong. Now, look. It's been a year now. One year this month since we went on the case. We've gone into every angle. We know Lamar's past like a book. The records fill two file drawers down at the bureau. And everything we've got says it's suicide. Why won't you forget it? Because I knew Eddie Lamar better than all of you, and I know he wasn't the kind of a guy who bumped himself off. That's why. What do you know about the inside of his mind? We got a million cases just like it. Guy comes home happy, kisses his wife, not a care in the world, bingo. Puts himself away. Not Eddie. You're off the beam, Sergeant. I'm sorry, Clint. We're closing the case for keeps this time. There's nothing more we can do. Ever made a mistake, Sergeant? Not very many. Check the record. This department is a pretty high batting average, Clint. There hasn't been a single unsolved murder in the books for the past 18 months. Oh, come on, Sergeant. You're not trying to tell me the break. Just break the record. It's all there in black and white. Well, I better get going. Do at the desk in 20 minutes. I'm sorry, Garvey. You're a smart boy in your own line. But you better let us make the decision when it comes to murder. It's our business. So long. So long. (laughs) Yeah, the boobs. The poor, dumb boobs. <laughs> oh, what I'd give to tell him off. Yes, Clint. If there were only a way you could tell them off, show them what blundering saps they are. It was a perfect crime, wasn't it? So perfect that for the past year you've had a wonderful time playing with them, watching them stumble, goading them on, almost daring them to discover how Eddie Lamar really died. Yes, Clint, it was a new kind of sport, full of thrills and danger. But you knew you were safe, because it was so perfect. No loopholes, no loose ends. You saw to that when you killed him. How you'd love to tell the public the real story of Eddie Lamar and then lean back and laugh with the rest of them while Chief Bradshaw and his clowns crawl into their holes. But that's the trouble with a perfect crime, isn't it? You can't tell anybody. You've just got to sit back and smile and boil a little inside. And then, one Saturday night on the highway north of San Diego, your lights pick up a hitchhiker at the edge of the road. Where to, buddy? Stick him up. Wait a minute, pal. You don't know... You heard what I said. Stick him up. Okay. Now, get out of the car. He took everything, your watch, your ring, all your money, 
except that hundred-dollar bill you always carry in your right shoe left you on foot ten miles from Chalmers Cove, the nearest town. Nothing to do but wait for morning in a haystack near the highway. You were boiling mad, weren't you, Clint? Didn't feel much like talking when that breezy truck driver picked you up the next morning. Oh, my fun. I'm always glad to give a guy a lift. Against company rules, of course, but, well, you know, it gets darn lonesome pushing one of these six-wheelers all day. Always managed to find a ride of nights, too. That's when you need a guy to talk to. Yeah, it keeps you from dropping off like that guy did last night. Huh? What guy? I just heard about it back at the station. Guy must have fell asleep at the wheel. Drove off a graded curve. Yeah, killed him dead. Car burned to cinders. Some guy from Frisco. Mention his name? Yeah, Garvey. Made a note in my mind without thinking. Garvey. <laughs> That's gravy spelled backwards. See? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it. I think I'll go on to San Diego. Change my mind. You can let me off here at Chalmers Cove. Yes, sir. Got a room for me? Yeah, I think so. I can give you 29. That'll be four dollars with that. That'll do. My name's Lawrence. Sign the register, please. Yeah. Okay. Now give me one of those newspapers, will you? Here you are. Uh, the maid will be in to make up the room right away. Tell her to skip it for a couple hours. I want to be alone. <laughs> The body was burned beyond recognition, but police confirmed identification of Garvey through articles of jewelry discovered in the wreckage. The car, a 39 Buick Coupe, was purchased by the victim in San Francisco. I'm dead. What do you know? I'm dead. <laughs> Say, clerk. Yes, sir. How does the mail run around here? I mean, tomorrow being a holiday. Uh, it'll be picked up Tuesday morning at 9. When was the last pickup on Saturday? Let me see. Was it 5? Yeah, yeah, that's right. 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon. I see. Your mind's going a mile a minute, isn't it, Clint? A whole year of talking to yourself, of chuckling in private at the stupidity of Bradshaw and his homicide detail. And now it's laid right in your lap. You think it through carefully alone in your room. They can't execute a dead man. And as far as their records go, you were killed Saturday night. A confession letter would knock the props out from under Bradshaw, wouldn't it? A letter from a dead man telling the citizens what a bunch of clowns they've got in the police department. A letter mailed to Jerry Slade of the San Francisco Times Star, Bradshaw's number one enemy. Uh, beg your pardon, clerk. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Where'd you say the mailbox is? There's one down the road at the next corner. Right by the signal oil station. Thanks. You can leave it here at the desk if no, you like. No, no, I want to put this one in the box myself. It's kind of important. And Jonathan Skinny Wainwright, the general who saw the stars and stripes haul down... Morning, Mr. Lawrence. Checking out. American Checking out? It's Tuesday, you oh, said... Oh, yeah, and I changed my mind. I think I'll hang around a while longer. Changed your mind, huh? Yes, it's Any idea how long? I can't tell. It all depends. I see. This may be. It's the greatest news, day of huh? all in the life of yeah. Skinny Wainwright. Well, now, here's a late that's item it. From San Diego. Better turn it off. Police revealed no. a new development in the Wait case of the automobile which crashed on the highway north of San Diego late Saturday night when they announced examination of the death of the charred victim proved him to be not Clinton Garvey but one Joseph Castro, an itinerant wanted in Salinas for robbery. It is believed that the car registered to Garvey had been stolen. Police are puzzled by the fact that Garvey has not yet appeared to report the theft and are checking on his whereabouts. And that's the uh, news to this What's moment, the matter, Mr. Lawrence? What, Your reporter what is time is it? Nine o'clock. The, the mailbox news. mail's picked up at nine. The mailbox? Hey, what's the matter, Mr. Lawrence? Where are you going? Anywhere. There's something wrong with that guy. I bet he's changed his mind again. Could you describe how an olive tastes to a friend who's never eaten one? <laughs> It'd be a pretty tough job, wouldn't it? Because an olive is so different from any other food. And that's the same fix I'm in when I try to describe new signal gasoline. 
This great new super fuel is so superior, you really have to try it to believe a gasoline can make such a difference in driving. But I can promise you this. With your very first tank full of new signal gasoline, you'll see the difference. Yes, and feel it, and hear it, too. Here's what I mean. With new signal gasoline in your car, when you touch the starter, you feel your motor spring instantly to life. When you step on the accelerator, you see your car step ahead with pickup that makes you proud. And even when your motor's working hard uphill, you hear it purr contentedly. Proof of signals, higher anti-knock. What's more, because you'll be shifting less and shifting waste gasoline, you know. You'll enjoy more high-gear miles, actually go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. No wonder there's been such a swing to signal. No wonder so many folks are saying, I didn't realize how much pleasure driving could be till I tried new signal gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Clint, the shoe's on the other foot now, isn't it? The laugh won't be as loud or as long as you'd hoped if that letter ever reaches San Francisco. Yes, if it gets there, you're a dead duck, and you know it as you race pell-mell down the side street in Chalmers Cove toward the mailbox you dropped it in last night. Five past nine, the pickup scheduled for nine o'clock. Maybe the truck will be late, you keep telling yourself. Yes, it's pulled up at the box as you turn the corner. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Wrong. Listen, listen, this letter I mailed last night. Yeah? I, I don't want to mail it. I changed my mind. I got to get it back. Well, where'd you mail this it? This box right here, last night. Well, can't get it back against department regulations. Once she's in the box, she's our baby till we make delivery. Better take it up with the postmaster. Well, listen, nobody will know about it. All you got to do Sorry, it. Sorry, bud. I tell you, I got to get it. I can't. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, pal. I'm under the bushes with you. Uh, what do you keep your keys? Oh, here. Okay, check the box first. Empty. Oh, he's already got it in the truck. Uh, three mail bags. Okay. It's all incoming. Oh, maybe the others. Cancelled. Incoming. <laughs> Better be in this one. <clears throat> oh, this is incoming, too. It's been picked up by another truck. Wait a minute. The post office. Yeah. The Los Angeles Post Office. I still got a chance. Just a minute, just a minute now. Now, what was that again, ma'am? You say you left the request at home? Pardon He's me. writing me each week for six weeks, wanting always one can mix nuts. Yeah, but you got to have the letter with you on all overseas packages. Now, pardon me, Chief. There's something I want to ask. Yeah, wait your turn, will you, pal? What was that, lady? Well, it'll only take a second. I just want I to... I said ask... wait your turn. Now, lady. One package mix not time standing in Vicarage to Okinawa Yeah, 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 I know. But you can't send a package that size without a written request. It's home, I'm telling you. Today, my husband look, is... Look, Chief, you've got to tell me... Say, what... what's eating you? Take your time, will you? Now, look, lady. Who'd you give the nut to here at the counter last time? Over there. Him. Oh. Hey, Kelly. Well, what are you hey. Oh, he's on the phone. Wait a minute. He'll be through. Yeah? What do you know? Just a minute. Oh, what's the matter, Ed? This woman here wants to send a package overseas. Says you took one from her every week. You left the request at home, she said. Oh, yeah, she's okay. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, okay. Okay, lady. Let's see, it'll be 27 cents. Thank you. Next time I bring the letter. Right. Now, what can I do for you, pal? Listen, I sent an airmail letter this morning from Chalmers Cove to San Francisco. What plane will be on? What time did you mail it? It was picked up at 9, maybe a little before. And I'll be on flight 6 out of Burbank. Leaves at noon. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, what do you know about that, Ed? What? I had a mail robbery down the line this morning. Yeah? Where? Chalmers Cove. Chalmers Cove? Hey, wait a minute. 
Now, where'd that guy go to? Oh, what's the matter? Take the window, Kelly. I got a phone call to make. Eleven o'clock, Clint. One hour to make that plane, and you haven't a chance without a reservation. Unless, yes, you walk into a phone booth in a drugstore. Hello, Pacific Airlines. Uh, this is the Army Priority Board. A civilian passenger for San Francisco will arrive at the airport in a half hour. J.G. Eastlake. Yeah. Give him a two priority on flight six at noon. Right. Thank you. Passengers Noble, Gray, and Hackett on flight 10 to Las Vegas. Please report to reservation desk. Flight 8 to Phoenix, Don't right, Pass, Stark. Vegas checked at 42 pounds. Priority 3. Uh, pardon me, clerk. Uh, just a moment, sir. Be right with you. That's Flight 10 to San Francisco. Change for the Reno plane at midnight tonight. There you are. Uh, what can I do for you? I want to leave on Flight 6 to San Francisco. I see. Your name? My name Excuse is... Excuse me just a minute. You're Miss Gregg. Yes. I'm Reynolds. Oh. Oh, yes. How do you do, Mr. Reynolds? Has he checked in yet? No. He called here about a half hour ago. Naturally, we confirm all calls from the priority board by calling back. They've never heard of him. I see. Well, I'll be in the lobby here. All you have to do is give me the eye. Right. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, what was that name again? Uh, name is Vickers. Howard Vickers. You say you're on flight, sir? I'm trying to make it. I... I don't have a priority. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, there may be a cancellation, of course. Will you wait here in the lobby? Take off in 15 minutes. Yes, I'll wait. You'll have a pretty fair chance. As it happens, we're running two sections on flight six. Two sections? Yes. That's a break for you, isn't it? Yeah. Quite a break. Two sections, Clint. Both of them carrying mail. You can see the trucks out there on the strip now, loading it on both planes. Even if you make it now, you've only got a 50-50 chance. The first plane takes off at noon. Finally, at nine minutes past 12. Mr. Howard Vickers, please report to reservation desk. We have your reservation on flight six, second section. Mr. Vickers, please. If you knew how to pray, Clint, you'd be praying now. Praying that the letter that means life or death to you is in one of the sacks you saw them load into the tail compartment of the plane you're riding on. Yes, and that you can follow it from the airport in San Francisco. Tail the postman who takes it to the office of the Times Star. But if it's on the first plane, Clint, if it's delivered before you arrive, you're just as dead as if you'd stayed in Chalmers Cove and waited for them to come and get you. You need a break, Clint, a good, healthy break. Then at half past one... Fasten safety belts, please. There's nothing to worry about. Fasten safety belts. Fasten safety belts, please. We're going to land. There's absolutely no danger. We've simply run into a storm and we're landing until it blows over. But where are we? We just passed over the Salinas. It may be necessary to spend the night here. A company limousine will pick you up and take you to a hotel. Just relax. We're landing now. Stewardess? Stewardess? Yes, sir? What about the first section up ahead? Well, I couldn't say, sir. They may be through the storm. They'll arrive in San Francisco before we do. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'll try to find out for you later. This is an emergency field. There's a shelter down to your right. This way, please. What's the matter, sir? Why, oh, I, I don't know. Well, you'd better come along, sir. I, I, I don't feel well, Stuart. It, it was a pretty bumpy landing. You'll feel better when you get your feet on the ground. Is, is everybody gone? Yes. Good. Well, what are you... Never mind, just do what I tell you and you'll be okay. Get out the keys. But I don't... Don't tell me you haven't got them. They're in your shoulder bag. All right. That's it. All right, now open up that tail compartment. But I have no right Listen, to... Listen, sister, I'd hate to drill you. I don't want to play games. See, now get back there and open it up. All right, all right. There you are. Packages? Well, what did you expect? Well, where's the mail? Letters? There isn't any. It's all express. Don't hand me that. There's got to be letters. There are. On the other plane. Give me those keys. Now get in that compartment. Hurry up. You're pretty panicky, aren't you, Clint? There's no way out of it now. For once, you don't know what to do. 
And just as you're about ready to give up. A train. If I can make that train. It's a quarter mile along the edge of the field of the tracks. A car is pulled up on the highway at the grade crossing. That's a better idea, isn't it, Clint? A car. Hey! Hey, you! Hey! Yeah. What's up? Wait a minute, will you? Wait a minute! Sure! What's the matter, mister? Had a wet, ain't you? Never mind that. Get out. Uh, what are you talking I said, about? get out or I'll blow your head off. Hurry up. Oh, yeah, sure. I didn't see All that. Right, beat it. Yeah, mister, sure. I'm going. I'm pulled. You've still got a chance, Clint. The other plane's delayed. Must have been. It's a big storm. Covers all the central California coast. You hit Watsonville at dusk. Take a chance on the shortcut to Los Gatos. You're almost there when... Bridge washed out. I gotta turn back. Back to the junction. Optos, Soquel, Santa Cruz, Ben Loman. Sorry, bud. There's a slide on the pass up ahead. There'll be a two-hour wait at least. Two hours. Ten o'clock now. It'll be midnight before you get across the mountains. You can't think of anything but that other plane. If it were delayed long enough, the delivery would be held over until morning. That's the one you're counting on, isn't it, Clint? Then finally, at four in the morning, you're there. You leave the car on 3rd Street and take a taxi the rest of the way to the Time Star building on Mission Street. There's a one-armed coffee joint across the way where you can telephone. Airlines. Listen, I want some information. Yes, sir. About flight six. What's your destination, please? Incoming flight six, yesterday from Los Angeles. What did you want to know, sir? Did it arrive here? Well, flight six from Los Angeles yesterday was in two sections. Yes, I know it was in two sections. One was grounded north of Salinas. I want to know about the other one, the first one. Just a moment, please. What is the reason for your call, sir? Does there have to be a reason? I'm sorry, sir. Is there someone aboard the I'm plane? I'm calling from the San Francisco Times Star. There's a very important airmail letter aboard the first section of Flight 6 addressed to my office, and I want to know whether it'll arrive this morning. Does that satisfy you? Just a moment, sir. The first section of Flight 6 arrived an hour ago. Your letter should be in the 8 o'clock delivery. Thanks. <laughs> Three hours to go. Three miles of pacing up and down Montgomery Street, over to Kearney, up market to 7th and back again. Five cups of coffee. You're going on your nerve, Clint. Your hands are shaking so you can hardly light a cigarette. Then at five minutes of eight, a mail truck drives up to the rear entrance of the Time Star building. And you're ready for it, waiting on the platform. Uh, hello there. Is, uh, is that our mail? Well, this is for the Time Star, if that's what you mean. Great. Everything here? Yeah, it's all in that sack. Well, I'll take it up. Save you a trip. Well, thanks a lot. Hey, better take her by the cord here. Okay. It's <laughs> heavier than it looks. Yeah. I'll see you later. So long. I'm working up. Phone booth, Joe. Well. What? What would you be taking that mailbag into a phone booth for, Mr. Garvey? Get away from me. I'll Give me up. it. Thanks. 38 caliber, professional model. You know how to use it, too. I'm Reynolds, FBI. Saw you yesterday at the Los Angeles airport, right? What's the gimmick? Charges? Well, let me see. There are two assault charges, two mail robbery counts, a car theft, and defrauding an innkeeper. Uh, you didn't pay your bill at the Chalmers Cove Hotel, you know. Of course, I'm mainly interested in this mail business, just like you are. You gonna tell me why? You seem to know a lot of answers. Suppose you tell me. You knew one answer you weren't supposed to know, Garvey. You were the only citizen in San Francisco outside the Pacific Airlines organization who knew the second flight of Flight 6 was grounded at Salinas yesterday. You know it doesn't take much fooling with mailbags to get a lot of publicity. We checked you from that affair you pulled yesterday at Chalmers Cove right through to the call you made to the airline a little while ago. I was down there when it came in. 
Now, suppose you just walk along far enough in front of me to uh, keep things friendly, hmm? We'll take care of the mail. The Whistler will return with a strange ending to tonight's story in just a moment. Meantime, a word about two important items that have been making news recently. One, the atom. And two, new signal gasoline. (laughs) No, I'm not going to tell you there's atomic power in new signal gasoline. But recent developments in atoms actually did make possible this great new motor fuel. And I'll tell you what I mean. You see, science has long known that gasoline is composed of molecules. And each molecule is an arrangement of atoms. The way those atoms are arranged determines just how much power you get from the gasoline. In old-style gasolines, the molecules were left just as nature made them. But recently, certain chemists found out how to take gasoline molecules apart, then rearrange the atoms in an entirely new way. The result is new signal. The new gasoline you can prove is superior. Not just a pre-war quality motor fuel. Not just old-style gasoline improved. But an entirely new type, super fuel with performance so immediately apparent, you feel it, see it, hear it. Yes, with new signal in your tank, you actually feel your car get young again. And the easy way to prove it? Just drive into one of the friendly stations displaying signals, familiar yellow and black circle signs, and say, fill her up with new signal gasoline. Now, back to the whistler. Clint, you have a lot of time to think it over in your cell at the city jail during the next week. It was bad enough to be picked up just as you got to the payoff with a letter practically in your hand. But worse than that is the fact that you were outsmarted. That you're going to be on the receiving end of that horse laugh, as you call it. That's why you're puzzled as the days go by and there's no mention of the letter. Nothing of Eddie Lamar and the murder that used to be perfect. Then, ten days afterwards, Reynolds walks into your cell block. Hello, Clint. Hello. We got it. What? The letter. Took you long enough. Yeah. Slow service. Why you been holding it? We haven't. Wait a minute, what It wasn't in the sack, Clint. Where was it? Back at Chalmers Cove, the hotel. What? You're a little behind the times, Clint. The airmail rate is eight cents, not six. Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale, the curious story of the house on Sycamore Road. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories, and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen, with tonight's story by Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you try New Signal. The new gasoline you can prove is superior. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>